Fresh off Mark Zitto's birthday, we're back with you with three more looks in Major League Baseball for Tuesday. We'll also be looking ahead to the weekend college football slate. My God, Zitto, he seems like he's a confused man. He got a confused look on his face no, for his I birthday. But we're gonna I'm excited to be okay. Here. But we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna take that confusion away and give you insight as only we can here on the morning wager. Yeah. Mark Zitto, we, a very can we, can we go ahead. Yes. Can we thank the people? For the for the, the for the I, I was going to thank it. Yes. Viewership. Yes. I mean, you guys are awesome out there. Like they love us. Yes. I, I why. Yeah. I, I had it. I had it in my notes at some point to th- yeah, during the show. I was going to thank the people. A record viewership yesterday on the program. So thank you, everybody. Keep those likes, comments, retweets, fandom. Keep oh, it all okay. coming. All right. Now let's give the reason to people. To, uh, let's give the reason to people. Let's give the people a reason to like us, Mark Zeno. Uh, Cubs Pirates, very interesting matchup. Initially, this was going to be Justin Steele, who we both like uh, pitching for the Cubbies, uh, but no, he has been scratched. It is Kyle Hendricks, and it is of course the rookie pe- phenom Paul Skeens on the mound for the Bucks. How do you want to play this one, guys? I mean, again. It's it's the the pricing we've seen with Paul Skeen since he hit the big bigs has been really interesting, right? You know, it came up mm-hmm. as a sort of moderate level price favorite, and then after two starts, the numbers shot up, right? It was almost unbettable that Paul Skeen's you were paying two to one uh, just to bet a money line game with a with a very average to below average Pittsburgh Pirates team, and yet people were buying into it because he was executing, he was winning, and everything else. Now we've started to come back down to earth a little bit, and I think we get a good buy low spot here on Paul Skeens, not only because he's come back down to earth a little bit, at least uh, the hype has, but he's also facing one of the hottest teams in all of Major League Baseball in the Chicago Cubs, uh, who actually lost yesterday. They blew a lead late that Brian Power doesn't Don't want me start. to talk about. Oh, I'll, um, I'm bringing it up. Okay, well, you bring it up. I'll let you – I mean, you you let me rant on this show. I, the least I could do is let you cry like a little girl when you're mad. So, um that said, I like the fact that we get Paul Skeens here, and I like the fact that I get to fade Kyle Hendricks because, well, Kyle Hendricks stinks, um, and he has all year long. Although we did go through a stretch from, Ooh. like, the end of July into the middle of August where he was really good going at least five innings giving up three runs or less, and um, the Cubs had won three straights or three or four of starts of, of his in a row, and so it looked like he was settling in. Last week, he faced the Pirates. And less than an inning and two-thirds. Gave up eight hits and six runs. I think the Pirates do that again. We're going to cut this game in half. We're going to back Skeens in the first five to shut down the Cubs. Pirates push a couple across here. We get a moderate price. I think we're in the minus 140 range, minus 135. Shop around, see what you can get for a first five money line here. Keep the tie in our back pocket. Love Paul Skeens' day. Kyle Hendricks stinks. Good situation here. Let's go Pirates first five. All right. First thing, smash that like button if you're rolling with Zitto. And Paul Skeens in the first five. Secondly, Chicago Cubs bullpen. What? What was that? I had the under last night, okay? Seven and a half. Because, of course, I would bet the under seven and a half, Mark, uh, in a game involving two teams or involving a team that's been averaging nine runs over their last ten games by themselves, okay? I thought it was a great spot, and it was. It was 3 nothing heading in the eighth. And the Cubs bullpen, which has been ace the whole second half, just completely implodes. They give up five runs in the last two innings. In the fifth, of course... The one that killed me and put the game over, the Cubs score a run on a throw, or pardon me, the Pirates score a run on a throwing error with two outs in the top of the ninth. Absolutely reprehensible what happened in that game last night. So I hope you're right uh, with Skeens and the Bucks in the first five there. Oh, All right, by half of the double. Uh, real quick, yes? just one more. The Cubs are a top 10 K-rate team at home going up against Paul Skeens, which usually doesn't work out well for a team that strikes out a lot, but a guy like Skeens on the mound. So uh, just something else to add, a little feather in our cap there. He can throw them by the other opposing hitters. Uh, a game that I hope where there's not a lot of strikeouts, okay, is my half of the double play. Red Sox-Mets. Boston, Mark, has been held to exactly oh. one run in three straight games. All losses, <laughs> obviously. The Mets, they have allowed three runs or fewer in four consecutive games. All wins. The Mets have also won five straight starts made by David Peterson. Ask me if I care about any of that, Zeno. Do you care about any of that, Brian Power? No, I don't do care about any of that. No, and I'm going to tell you why. Because Peterson, a.k.a. the Bernie Madoff of baseball, is perhaps, no, don't st- not perhaps, he is still the biggest negative regression candidate among all starting pitchers in this. Look, you know the numbers, gang. 
2.83 actual ERA against the 5.12 expected ERA. Nobody in all of baseball has a bigger gap between actual and expected ERA than David Peterson. So I'm going to continue to find ways to fade him moving forward. Okay. And I. It's going to work today, okay? If at first you don't succeed, dust yourself off and try again. All right, okay. famous, famous words. All I, right, I, listen, but here's the problem. Right, go ahead. Here's the thing, okay? I'm not taking the Red Sox today, okay? Because they've got problems too. You know what they're pro- – well, they've got a couple problems. One, yeah. Cutter Crawford's on the mound. He has not he's been good in the second half. He's allowing over three home runs per nine innings since the All-Star break. Is that good? Yeah. No, it's not. It's very bad. And then this bullpen, the Red Sox bullpen, has oh. been utter trash in the second half. So look, I've got a lot of I've got a lot of ways to get over eight runs in this game. Peterson regression, Crawford stinks, Red Sox bullpen stinks. We're gonna get over eight in this game. That's my I, half of the double play. I'm going to warn you. We're going to sit here tomorrow on this very well watched, very liked, and popular show on Wager Talk TV. And I'm going to sit here tomorrow morning, and there's a very good chance I'm going to be able to say, I told you so. I just want you to know that. Like, I, I understand your angst for David Peterson. And folks, if you don't know Brian Power, when Brian Power turns on somebody, he will never like them again. He does not like don't David like Peterson. He never will like David Peterson. Uh, and no matter what David Peterson does in this world, Brian Power will always dislike him. That said, the maybe he tells me to hate. Ray is a bunch of BS. And the guy's actually just having a good year. I'm no. just letting you know. We talked this morning for no. the show. I said, don't do it. And you're like, nope, I'm doing it. I said, okay, don't do it. Don't get mad tomorrow when I sit here and I go, I told you so. I don't get mad ever. I just get even. And I will get even <laughs> with David Peterson. I promise you that. All right. Uh, unbelievable new deal going on at wagertalk.com. How about a three-day yes. all-access pass for just $49? Seems like a good – I did lose yesterday the, a brutal beat with the under and Cubs Pirates. However – I'm still 67% over the last 10 days with all selections. So how about getting down three days for $49? That's a $29 savings. And Mark, here's the thing. And by the way, you could you could get the three, day, three days for $49 with me and Mark. Okay, you can do it both. And you can choose when you want that to start. If you want to wait until Friday so you get all of our football selections this weekend, you can do that. Just head on over, wt.buzz slash mz, wt.buzz slash bp, and you can get a three-day all-access for $49. Mark Zeno, what do you got cooking on Tuesday? That's oh, today. boy. We'll continue our, our very stellar baseball record. Uh, 65%, guys, for the month of August in Major League Baseball. So we did really well. Cashed a lot of tickets. We'll have two baseball plays up for tonight. Uh, and, oh, by the way, just to talk about that three-day package. I've already locked in a play for Thursday night uh, football. So you'll get that coming up later in the week. Uh, already locked in there. And BP and I were talking about college games on Saturday. We got a whole bunch that we uh we we're already starting to like. So that three day package, best way to take advantage of it all. WT.buzz slash MZ will have two baseball plays up tonight, including the free ones that we give you here. I'm gonna have a four percent best bet in Major League Baseball tonight at my page. Let's get to our show best bet though, uh, oh. right now, Mark. And uh there is one team on the Tuesday slate that we think is going to score a lot of runs. As oh. you, our fine viewers, look at the odds, the wage talk live odds uh screen. You're probably thinking, oh, this team's going to score a lot of runs. And yes, we are thinking of the same team. It is the Baltimore Orioles who are against the Chicago White Sox. Uh, Mark, talk about how the White Sox uh, really, really are going to struggle uh, on the mound tonight. Well, look, we, we've seen this spot before, right? You, 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 Orioles are just unbettable in any size, way, shape, or form, whether you're looking for money line, first five, first five spread. Just the numbers are not going to work out in your favor, at least if you're somebody who is sort of a juice averse like I am in, in paying high, high tolerance for juice. But there's other ways to slice this thing. And the Orioles going over their team total of five and a half runs, especially when you're getting even money uh, at certain books there, uh, is the way to go. Nick Nestrini is starting. Nick Nestrini, uh, Chicago White Sox pitcher, 24 years old. Seems like a very nice, young, good Italian boy. Um, but probably needs to, to, to go back to mama because – his 0-6 record and his 7.04 ERA and his 1.73 whip are things that his mother would spank him over uh, for the amount of effort that he's putting out there. Now, the funny part about this is, is that Nestrini's actually had back-to-back starts that are actually pretty good against Boston and Texas. He's only given up a combined five hits and two on runs in his last two starts. Oh, that was great. One, because those things were in Chicago, not on the road. And two, uh, the regression monster is going to come for Nick Nestrini. Oh. Who's here? You ready for this? You want to know what his ERA is at home this year in four starts? 
Please three tell point me. One, three point one zero, and opposing hitters are batting just one fifty five off him at home. Would you like to know what it's his ERA bad. on the road is this year? Please tell me. I bet you it's not good. His ERA on the road is higher than the points Florida State scored last night. 14.81. And opposing haters are batting 348 against him. In case you haven't been paying attention, folks, the Baltimore Orioles, top 10 batting average, OPS, and top five in WRC Plus at home on the season. And oh, by the way, adding the Chicago White Sox, really bad bullpen. Really bad. It stinks. Yeah. Uh, We're going over five and a half here, guys. There you go. Let us know your favorite bets for Tuesday in Major League Baseball by commenting down below. And yes, continue to like. Uh, if you already haven't done so, smash that like button and make sure you're subscribed to the Wage Talk YouTube channel. We always appreciate the support. All right, let's talk a little college football because there are, as you alluded yeah, to earlier on, Mark, there are already some games catching our eyes, numbers catching our eyes, and they're in marquee matchups, right? We've got some big games on the docket, some top 25 games. Michigan hosting Texas. Okay, we've got NC State and Tennessee playing in Charlotte, North Kakalaki. Uh, Where would you like to start, uh, fine sir? What line has caught your eye for Saturday? Because what we want to focus in on for the viewers is potential overreactions from week one, right? Whether it's college or the NFL, that's always the thing you've got to have on your mind heading into week two. Okay, one game is a small sample size. Is it a proper reaction by the odds makers or is it an overreaction? Talk to us. Well, if you look at Tennessee and NC State, these are two teams that are obviously top 25 that are playing against each other. Both these teams had this matchup circled early on in the year. Tennessee coming off a squeaker, 69-3 to over Chattanooga. A uh, little bit tighter than most people had expected. Uh, unlike <laughs> NC State, found themselves in a actual dogfight uh, with Western Carolina, a game that they were actually losing and trailing yeah. at one point. Uh, ended up winning the game by 17, so it didn't look like it was that much of a sweat. 21-point fourth quarter um, sort of put it away. Now, NC State is a team that I'm high on. Uh, Way to talk today earlier this year, I gave out their over eight and a half win total. Uh, for the Wolfpack, I think this is a 10-win team for the first time in Dave Dorian's head coaching tenure uh, in Raleigh. The seven and a halfs are out there right now. I mean, this thing opened in in the five range, and quickly everybody bet on Tennessee. And now, after a 69-point outburst, everybody is betting on Tennessee. We're going to see seven and a half. I would wait. This thing might push to eight. Um, you know, even even higher than that as we get closer towards the end of the week. Two things. One, the game is technically neutral site. It's in Charlotte, North Carolina. Obviously, NC State's in Raleigh, but you should get a very Wolfpack heavy home crowd here between these two teams. And part of this was, I think, you know, there was a little bit of jitters from Grayson McCall, uh, who's taking over at NC State. He's got a game under his belt now. NC State's always been about defense. They prided themselves on defense outside of a bad start in the first quarter where they gave up 14 points. Guess what? They only gave up seven points the rest of the way to Western Carolina. This is still a Tennessee offense, I think, in a state of transition. I would throw out the t- the Chattanooga win as anything that was valid, and I just look at NC State here in this spot thinking that their defense will overcome and keep this thing tighter than people expect. I lean NC State here. I want to see how these numbers develop the rest of the week and what it looks like, BP, but I think there might be a little bit of an overreaction on Tennessee given the fact that they put up 69 points against Chattanooga. 69. <laughs> I'm sorry. Couldn't resist. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so uh, the, the big the number of points they put up obviously is inflating this line a little bit. <laughs> All right. Uh, I yeah, don't know I mean, if it's Beavis or Butthead. I guess one of, so, one of us is Beavis, one of us is Butthead. You pick. All right. Anyway, um, I'm going to tackle Texas and Michigan. And you talk about the regression monster. We, we, we cite uh, that mythical being uh, often on the program. Obviously, okay, Everyone thinks post-Jim Harbaugh era in Ann Arbor, Michigan's going to take a tumble. And that is priced into this number as Michigan is now a seven-point underdog at home against Texas. Michigan was not impressive, Mark. I watched most of that game against Fresno State Saturday night. It was a six-point game in the fourth quarter. And even with a defensive touchdown, it was an 86-yard pick six. where Obviously, Fresno State was moving the ball again. That only got the final margin to 20. Still not enough to cover for the Wolverines against Fresno State. The offensive line did not look good. Michigan only ran for 4.4 yards per carry against Fresno State. Uh, what are you going to do against Texas, who looked the part? 
by the way, of a top five team. They destroyed Colorado State 52 0. It was a 31 0 game at half, 45 0 at the end of the third. Uh, this is the Longhorns' first ever trip to the big house. It's a big one that these teams met in a Rose Bowl, I think it was, several years back. Uh, I know you don't care about those things when I reference random games. But here's the thing that you should care about. Texas has won seven straight non-conference road games, covering the spread in five five of them. They beat Alabama last year, 34-24, remember, in Tuscaloosa. That was kind of the jump start of their march to the college football playoff. Michigan, it, it's been a while, Mark, since they've hosted a non-conference Power 14. You'd have to go back to 2021, when they played Washington, and that Washington team was not very good. It was a 4-8 and eight team that year. Here's the thing, though, okay, when you're handicapping this game. The key is the Michigan defense. You go back to the start of 2022, Michigan has allowed more than 24 points in only one game, okay? That is what I think the key to this game is. If Michigan's defense shows up, they can at least stay, obviously, stand and cover the number. I don't think Michigan's winning this game in full candor, but it is their defense that is the key to this matchup. So that is what I would look at. I, I know people have already hit this under, and I completely agree with that. I think this is I think points yeah. will be at a premium in the big house on Saturday. So I think keep that in mind. Michigan defense when handicapping this game. I wouldn't really want to lay the points with Texas anymore in this. Obviously, the number, you know, it's a lot different than what it was over the summer. But uh, it'll be interesting to see if that uh, maize and blue defense could keep them in this one. Yeah, I, I agree. I think the under is to play. I, I don't I, – yeah. Michigan has done did this all the beginning of last year. Remember, all their games are low scoring. They didn't blow anybody out. Even the bad teams, mm-hmm. they just kind of you know let them hang around in the first half and then steamrolled them in the second. So I can see that game script developing. If you like Michigan, play them in the first half, play the first half under. It's I don't see Michigan's offense playing catch up here. If they get down early, no. they're probably not coming back. They're done. Uh, one game where the odds makers are – not overreacting. I'll just go through this one real quick. Is in Oregon, Boise State. Oregon is still, uh, you know, a three-score favorite despite looking very bad in the opener. I've seen a lot of sharp folks saying, "Let's hop on the Ducks this week." I'm a little gun shy about doing that. Boise State. They put up a lot of points, so they also gave up a lot to Georgia Southern, which isn't good. So I haven't made up my mind there, but that's an interesting game because we're talking about overreactions um, to either unimpressive or impressive performances in Week One. The odds makers are kind of staying firm with Oregon in that Boise State matchup, despite uh, not looking very good in week one. You wanted real quick to mention Clemson and App State, yeah, I know, I mean, before we take them home. We saw what happened to Clemson against Georgia. Um, look, no disrespect, but this is App State here. Um, and they're going I mean, into Someone's going to get this perspective. Yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna, and uh, look, we saw the opening at this thing at 17. Now, the only thing that's a little bit alarming, I think the 17 would be a gift. If I saw 17s flat across the board, I would hit Clemson right now and lay the 17. However, there is some variance in the marketplace here. Some books are at 16 and a half. Some books are at 18. Um, and it's hard to figure. And two of the sharper books in town are on opposite sides. One's at 16 and a half. The other one's up at 18. So uh, shop around here. I would endorse 17 or 16 and a half definitively or 17. I, I think Clemson's, I don't want to say they had a bad showing. They played Georgia really well for a half. Yeah. Okay, uh, you could say that. They had a bad showing in the second half. They were down mm-hmm. six to three at halftime, whatever it was. Um, six zero. Okay, whatever. Mm-hmm. It was a very close game in the first half, is my point. <laughs> so uh, you're such a jerk. Anyway, nonetheless, if that game had different optics, I believe this number is bigger. It's closer to 20. Uh, so I think we're getting a little value here at yep. Clemson at seven. I don't disagree with that read at all. All right. Yeah, you're- we, g- we gave you a lot. We had a record-setting number of views yesterday. People watched the show. So we gave you a record-setting amount of content on Tuesday. That's our way of saying thanks. Again, don't forget to hit that like button for on the show. Three-day all-access, $49. Head on over to Mark's page or my page to pick that up right now. We will be back on Wednesday. And, Mark, I believe the plan, in addition to our baseball talk, will be to talk a little National Football League Week yeah, 1. I look forward baby. to that. Yep. All Same. right. I don't know if there's going to be a jingle today or not. I'll just start. Okay, there it is. We thank you again for your support on the show. I love a sloppy pilot. Every chance is.